Eyewitnesses in Gaza tell CBS News Israeli forces are pushing deeper into Gaza's southern city of Rafah. Israel's national security advisor said today that military operations in Gaza will last at least through the end of this year. That news comes after an Israeli strike in Rafah over the weekend killed dozens of Palestinians, many of them women and children. CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayeb has more from Jerusalem. Well, Sunday's attack on the displacement camp triggered global outrage with those horrifying scenes of bodies burned and mutilated beyond recognition. Now, the scale of the devastation caused by the Israeli airstrike also raised questions about the type of weapons used. Images gathered from the blast light show the remains of what three independent weapons experts told CBS News is an American-made GBU-39 warhead with a payload of 17 kilos. All three agreed the distinctive shape of the GBU-39, especially its tail, helped them identify the remains and that the clearly identifiable serial number or cage code on the specific munition traced it to a California-based weapons manufacturer. Now, Israeli military spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari said the strike targeted two senior Hamas commanders and confirmed that two munitions with small warheads also weighing 17 kilos, were used in the strike. Now, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Israel was investigating the case, saying that absent a complete investigation, the U.S. cannot verify whether the small diameter weapons were used in the strike. And this is as eyewitnesses tell CBS News Israel is now widening its offensive in Rafah after tanks moved into the heart of the city for the first time following the displacement of over a million Palestinians from there in the last few weeks, many to an unknown fate. Major. MTS Tayeb, thank you. Margaret Brennan joins me here on the set. She is, of course, CBS News' chief foreign affairs correspondent and the moderator of Face the Nation. Margaret, isn't it true that in most instances, if there is a Israeli military activity anywhere, U.S. weapons are probably more likely than not to be involved? Yes. The United States is That's the largest weapon supplier. Israel does have a pretty robust domestic um, manufacturing capability. In fact, the United States has an unusual arrangement, really helps directly invest in it, unlike any other country. Uh, but the United States is the chief weapons provider. Absolutely. And in this context, viewed politically, the confirmation that U.S. weapons were involved in this particularly horrific incident, does that enlarge the scope of political problems for the Biden White House as it tries to deal with this ongoing conflict and all of the strategic dilemmas it presents for Israel and the United States? Well, you know, reporters are trying to pin down exactly what was used and what happened, because the story has changed a few times. If you remember yesterday from the White House podium, John Kirby said that according to Israel's claims, it was a secondary explosion, not the strike that caused the fire. Uh, Hagari, who was a uh, addressed there by MTS has also said they're investigating what happened with the fire that caused the civilian casualties. So they're trying to separate out the munition from the incident and suggesting that perhaps there was a secondary cause for it. But the bottom line here is that you're right. You know, the United States is the largest weapons provider here. Odds are that the U.S. was involved in some way, a shape or form in terms of that munition and its origins. But also, broadly speaking, what worries U.S. intelligence officials so much is that regardless of this one single strike, it is the United States' unequivocal support and defense of Israel to date that has made it viewed in the, in the eyes of many in the region as completely signing off on all of this. Uh, so it, and whether States it wants to be or directly, not viewed exactly. as complicit in events like this that cause such repulsive video and damage and death of civilians. Right, and we are in a social media environment where anyone with a phone is seeing those horrific, and that was a word used by the Secretary of State, mm -hmm. horrific images, and that that is an extremely powerful recruitment tool. Uh, the, the head of U.S. intelligence said that this will have generational impact, the war itself and the civilian casualties. Speaking of Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, let's listen to some sound relevant to this from today. We have um, been very clear with Israel on the imperative in this instance, as in other instances, to immediately investigate uh, and determine exactly what happened and why it happened. And if accountability is, is necessary to make sure 
that there is accountability. You know the Secretary of State very well. I know him less well, but I detect a kind of hardening fatigue in that answer. Do you? Absolutely. And he chose his words very carefully. It was our own Olivia Ghazis who put that question to him and made it personal um, in really directing it towards him, his review, his building that had signed off, remember, on that national security memorandum saying that while uh, it could be assessed that Israel has used U.S. provided weapons in ways that are not consistent with international humanitarian law, that the U.S. couldn't yet determine that they had violated Can't be weapons. absolutely sure. Can't be absolutely sure. Gave them plausible deniability. And so Olivia made that personal there. You said, mm -hmm. you know, not clear that this had violated. What do you think now? Uh, and he was very carefully choosing his words there and saying he could not verify what it is that uh, the Israeli military was claiming it needed to be investigated. He called it horrific, but he also said even if this was targeted, even if this was the small diameter munition that Israel says it was, even in those circumstances, you can have terrible, horrific, unintended consequences. And he pivoted back towards the argument he's been trying to make to the Israeli government, which is what is your plan for what comes next? Because as he warned there, there is potentially a fate worse than Hamas. He called it jihadis. He said, you're going to have an insurgency that you cannot extinguish if you continue to do this. But as you well know, Margaret, the Israelis say, look, Hamas is here now. They're there. They're our enemy. They, our strategic imperative is to not deplete or reduce their capabilities, but to eradicate their capabilities. And the only way to do that is to accept a certain amount of civilian casualties because Hamas embeds itself among Palestinian right. civilians. That is their argument. That has not been globally persuasive. It is still persuasive within the Biden White House, true? It is to a certain extent, but even the Secretary of Defense has said you only defeat a bad idea with a better one. And that is why, Mr. Netanyahu, tell me how the story ends. Where does this go? What is next? The United States continues to present, the Biden administration continues to present the Netanyahu government with suggestions as to how to extract itself, not just how to carry out an operation in Rafa, but who's going to operate this gate? Who's going to operate this? Do you really want to have a military uh, it, occupation of this area? Here's what it's going to cost you in blood, sweat, and treasure. Do you really want to do this? If you do that, do you really call yourself a democracy? If you want to be a democracy and you want the integrity of the state of Israel to be upheld as the Jewish state, here's how you do it. And laying out and trying through the diplomacy and the pressure to get that argument forward. And they, you heard it from the secretary. Mm -hmm. Very frustrated. And when they talk about jihadis, essentially what I hear the Biden administration saying is you may get rid of Hamas, but you don't know what you may inspire that's exactly. not named Hamas that could be as lethal or possibly more. Who is, who is viewed as even more extreme, not linked to a political cause, however wrongheaded. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, the, the argument of, of violence as achieving that cause, but someone who was just completely nihilistic. That's what I understood mm -hmm. the Secretary of State trying to say when he said you could have a worse fate, you could have jihadis. Indeed. Margaret Brennan, as always, thank you so very much.